Just a quick note before this free video. If you click like and subscribe, I'd be very thankful. I actually spent some time on this. Did you guys watch NXT last night? Yes. You did? I did. Can you believe? What Carlito said? Yeah, no, it's no. crazy. Oh. Can you believe that the Javon Evans character is now me? They're stealing bits from this show, and I'm Nathan Frazier, I think. He literally oh, no. is now Brian Alvarez. Like, I could not believe this segment they did. <laughs> Good luck with your career, buddy. So, they're backstage. It's Cedric and Javon, okay? Tell me if this sounds familiar, everybody, okay? Cedric and Javon are backstage. And Axiom and Nathan Frazier walk up. And Axiom says to Javon Evans, Hey, congratulations, man. You had back-to-back -back main events. You didn't win, but you were close. You're going to get there. And Nathan Frazier says to him, You're young. You've got time. And now Javon is like, he's furious. And he goes, Dude, I am so sick of people telling me that I'm young and I've got time. And Frazier says, Don't worry. You're going to win the big one eventually. It'll be a while, but you'll win that big one eventually. Get used to it, kid. I had to deal with all that when I was your age. Now Javon can take no more. Slaps a dude across the face. Storms off. And then Javon Alvarez runs into Wesley, who says, Look, hate's going to come at you from all directions. But don't worry. You got time for all that. Now Javon's furious. I'm like, my God, like, it's me now. It's me and the rest of these idiots are the NXT writing team that have been telling me, oh, don't worry, he's all right. He's okay, he's young. I can't believe this. All those years that you grew up imitating and wanting to be the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels, so bad, and now he's stealing all your material to put on NXT, on the CW, on national TV every single week. Hey, listen, I'll, I'll be Javon's spirit animal. Oh, my God. I'll, I'll wave the flag. Whatever gonna, it takes. Come you're on. Gonna be, you going to be bouncy? Don't worry about Javon. He'll be fine. He's God, he's as, he's as sick of that as I am. Sick of it. It's true. Both of us. So anyway, now I can't even believe I may complain about this. Now they've announced that Javon and Cedric are getting a tag team title shot next week. Uh, you it's hate like Cedric. that's what we're gonna do to See, like make all this better. Go. He's Javon gonna be a and Cedric are gonna win he, the tag titles with a week's a build. God, gonna be a champion, but it's with Cedric, so it is beneath him. They are still killing this kid. He's got no more. Nah, time. the point is, any, it's almost over. any nerd can win the tag team titles. Like whatever, who cares? He'll get his belt. You know, Nick Wayne won the tag titles. That went a long way, by the way. You know, and then somebody else. You ever you ever gone and look at some of the the videos what, again? The, the GCW tag title. Listen, have you ever Oliver carried them? Have you ever gone on YouTube and looked at some of the videos that get put up, and then look at the comments on them? It's like, I mean, we got to do it and everything like that, but you can just see like there's so many people that don't. They only watch like the short YouTube videos. So there was like a video up there where I was like complaining about Javon and how they just are wasting him and he's just doing whatever and he's a jobber and everything. And then, you know, there's all these people in the comments going, gee, I wonder if he had the same energy regarding Nick Wayne. Well, actually, yeah. You just don't listen to those shows. God, it's just as bad. It's actually, you know what? It's actually worse with Nick Wayne because Javon's actually had, like, matches. I mean, how many matches has Nick Wayne had in AEW? 13 he since he turned him. 18 or whatever. And then he wins the, uh, he won the, he was one third of the trios titles for like a week. And then they just took him off him again. It's like, yes, I have in fact had the same energy for Nick Wayne. I'm sorry if you don't listen to that show. Smarten up and listen to it before you do a stupid comment. You geeks. Why, why do you say you have to do that? You don't have to do that. You can have to do what? Comment. You can close the comment section instead of letting all the vermin in and just spew no. nonsense. It would be one thing if you actually got some intelligent commentary well, in sometimes there all you about do. any really when yeah, sometimes pointed you do. out ever.
you know, like I'll let you do, I'll let you do the research. I, I had that uh, that post where I was like, you know, AEW needs to like promote more. And they need to not book for the sickos or whatever. And there were a lot of people who were like, you know, the guy's right. Let's promote our, our wrestling shows, you know, promote them. Anyway, we'll do some more news after the break. Then I'll talk about this NXT on CW. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Adam Cole did an interview with Sports Illustrated. He said that he injured his leg so badly, the doctors had to put a cadaver bone in his leg. First piece of news that I heard was your ankle is way worse than we anticipated. You have to get another surgery in seven days. So not only did I have to get double the amount of screws in my ankle, also I had to get someone else's bone put into my ankle because the bone piece within my ankle just completely disintegrated. Incredibly thankful to the donor and the family. Certainly a better option. Definitely notice a difference in my left ankle as opposed to my right one. I think that comes with the territory. He was out for a year and finally able to come back. Increase the vitamin D. Brutal. Brutal. Also, Hologram is injured, which explains the random angle they had at Battle of the Belts, where Roosh, Drillistico, and the Beast Mortos all beat him up backstage and tried to take his mask off. So, apparently he got hurt at that uh, Wrestle Dream uh, Best of Three Falls match with Mortos. Don't have any idea the severity of the injury, but apparently it'll be a few weeks, so... Hopefully that means nothing too serious. And then Raw on Monday night. 1.58 million viewers. 0. 0.51 in 18 to 49. They tied with The Voice as the highest rated show in 18 to 49 outside of, obviously, the NFL. They faced uh, a lot of competition. Ravens versus the Buccaneers. 16 million viewers. And a 4.71 in 18 of 49. The kids love Lamar. Yeah. You know what's funny is, um, by the way, it's 1.61 million viewers and 1.55 million viewers. Lenny hasn't been around for a while, but you ever notice it like when you when you go over these ratings here? And let's say you're a big fan of AEW and you talk about how, you know, this Rampage show did the lowest number ever for a Rampage. The lowest 18 to 49, like, it, it, it uh, we're talking shows that were preempted, different, like, it never did a lower 18, and then they go, ah, I don't care about these numbers, doesn't matter to me, I just want to watch a show. Well, first off, you can't watch Rampage anymore after the end of this year, because it got canceled, so you can't watch it anymore. Probably would have not been canceled if it had done better. But the other thing they go is, only in wrestling do people talk about ratings and I just want to mention that um, I do another non-wrestling show for subscribers. It's called After Dark Radio. We talk about Bigfoot and paranormal activities and UFOs. Got a guy coming on this Thursday to talk about exorcisms. And you can listen to this show, by the way, as part of a subscription on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or YouTube. F4WOnline.com slash Spotify. F4WOnline.com slash Apple. F4WOnline.com slash YouTube. Any of these work. nine ninety nine a month. But anyway, the point is, so I had a guy on talking about the paranormal and, you know, ghost hunting. You ever watch those ghost hunting shows? And I said, uh, like, you know, you, this guy actually had a degree he he had a he had a, a a master's degree in parapsychology, and he runs experiments and such. And I said, like, w- what do you see on these shows? It is like good or bad, you know? How are these shows? And he goes, I don't like these shows because essentially, the ghost hunting shows. There's like a right way to look for ghosts, apparently, but there's also what the the producers of the show want. And he goes, you know, they always want you to look for ghosts in the dark. Like you go to a cemetery or you go to a spooky house in the middle of the night in the dark and you look through the thing with your fleer and everything. He goes, we get, you know, people report ghosts and hauntings and everything. He goes, these things almost never happen at night in the dark. Like almost nobody is in the dark and they see a ghost. They see a ghost like, you know, they're walking through the thing and walking through Sistine Chapel or whatever and three o'clock in the afternoon and there's... He goes, it never happens in the dark. But like these producers, they want to get great ratings, he says. 
They say, well, turn off the lights. It's spookier. Or, hey, go to the grave. He goes, you know how many people report ghosts in a graveyard? Like, nobody. Nobody ever reports a ghost in a graveyard. But they, the producers, because they want to draw big ratings, well, they want you to go to the uh, the graveyard. So anyway, the point of this is everybody is concerned about ratings. It isn't something where wrestling fans or whatever it's like everybody's concerned about it. If you're a fan of the ghost hunting shows, you want your show to do a good number so it doesn't get canceled. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button and you'll never miss a video again.